This here is a corkscrew. Now, why am I showing you a corkscrew on a YouTube vlog? Well, I'll tell you. Pretty much resembles my life. Something as simple as this, and not so simple as this. <laughs> I noticed that on the outside, I have a smile on my face. One would think that my life is pretty awesome and smooth, as this is. Uncover this, and you discover it's going in spirals, again and again and again, till, boop, how? <laughs> It hits the tipping point, and it hurts, and they're hurting. Sometimes you just don't know what someone's going through. Conserving water, putting a glass of wine in our hands, <laughs> and having a talk with wine, with Christine. Christine's wine talks. <laughs> so every week, I'm gonna share a glass of wine with a new guest and talk. We'll have our stories. Hopefully you'll be able to relate to them or just entertaining, <laughs> whichever. Every bottle of wine we pop, we're gonna get a cork and I have all my guests write their names on it. And I'm gonna be collecting them and hopefully at the end I'll have enough to cover a wall. I don't know. <laughs> so it looks like this one already has my name on it. So I guess I'm going first. <laughs> I have quit the story though. So I guess you might wanna sit down. <laughs> And have a glass of wine with this one. Hi, <laughs> my name is Christine. I'm a registered nurse and a published author. A lot of people ask me why I write. What inspired me to become an author? Well, I tell them that I wrote a lot of poems in high school and that's what inspired me. I've always been a writer, which is the truth, but there's a lot of backstory to it. It was end of freshman year, mainly all of sophomore year. I was the prime target of bullying. I got bullied so much that I ended up having to transfer schools junior year. And that's something I don't tell a lot of people. Um, I was very ashamed of it. I got bullied going to school in classes and then I would go home and they brought it to a new level on Facebook. They'd make Facebook videos on the, each other's walls about me. It was just like a never ending cycle. I would beg my mom to not go to school. I would lock myself in my room. Oh, so my mom would tell me, write all my feelings, everything I want to say to them. Write it, and when I'm finished, take it and delete it. Don't send that to them. But at least I got it all out. And when I was a junior and I transferred over, um, sometimes I would skip lunch in the lunchroom, go to the library and just write. I wrote everything and they turned into poems. It got me through my aunt's death, it got me through breakups, um, got me through everything. I just wrote and wrote and turns out just writing just came natural to me then. Like it just, I loved it. I talked about everything, yeah. Now, the second hardship I've ever had in my entire life was actually just very recently. It was a few months ago, and my mom was at work and complaining about her excruciating back pain. I brought her into the ER, and she hasn't been home since. She was in the hospital for 55 days, the majority of those days she was in the medical ICU and she ended up developing septic shock so she had a massive infection in her blood it went through her bloodstream and then they started targeting her organs she became extremely sick 
and I have to say that she was physically there in the bed, but she wasn't there. She was with her mother in the kitchen, and her mother died 33 years ago. My mom saw her mother and God, and to hear that just was absolutely heartbreaking. To see my mother like that, she's my best friend. It was scary, it got so dark that they told me to get my brother to come from New Mexico to say his goodbyes to her while she's still breathing. And it was hard. My mom took a 360 and she ended up becoming stronger. Hi mom, it's March 28th and I'm out to dinner with Bravo! Yeah, it's very exciting. We're bonding. I want to say you're doing so great today. So keep it up. We are so incredibly happy. Our mother is back and she's back in action. I love you mom. She finally got discharged. She went to rehab and she currently is in an inpatient rehab. From her waist down, she couldn't move at all. So she's finally starting to walk. Today she walked 10 feet, which was such a huge progress, but it's been rough without her at the house. While my mom was in the hospital as a patient, my dog got sick. My dog, Mary Jane, started throwing up blood and I brought her to the vet. She had sepsis as well as my mom. She went into DIC, which means she was bleeding everywhere and it was coming out of every opening of her body. She is 10 years old and that's very young for a chihuahua. She was a healthy dog, she was. They couldn't save her. So they made it very beautiful. They let me have as much time as I could with her. They put her to sleep literally in my arms. I gave her two injections. The first one put her to sleep and the second one stopped her heart. You're hearing her last breath and that her eyes didn't close. <laughs> In movies, their eyes closed. Her eyes stayed open, so it felt like she was still alive. And it was really hard having her go. And the hardest part was I didn't have anybody there with me putting my baby to sleep. <laughs> and they ended up giving me this Mary Jane's paw print. So yeah, that really broke me. Am I better now? Yes. I'm starting to be happy again. And instead of putting a fake smile on my face, I actually have a real one. So I want to thank everybody for listening to a part of my story. And there's many more to come. And yeah. So what's going on next week? <laughs> So upcoming next week, we have Bridget. She's my best friend. She's amazing. And you're gonna love hearing her stories. And I'm off. Bye.